Greetings, everyone. Thanks so much for making it out to our next session today. Super excited to have you. You got this breakout and one more, should you choose to attend before we see you at Bash tonight. So please give me a hand in welcoming Stu, who's going to tell you a little bit more about Trello. Hello, friends. Can you hear me? I have this like uh, Ray Romano from Texas voice that sometimes doesn't translate. Um, yeah, so I want to call something out, just maybe it's a little bit of an observation. You know, we're at team, we're talking about kind of like really adult topics. Like, I, I have a 10 year old, a seven year old, a five year old. If I was to talk to them about what I'm doing these couple of days, they'd be like, I don't really get that. And so I want us to maybe take a second to just think about like simpler times when we were kids and think about specifically what was your biggest fear as a kid? So I want to do this like thought exercise. I'm a designer, so I'm going to get weird and creative for a second. Um, Go to that place in your head. What is the biggest fear you had? Maybe it was dinosaurs. Maybe it was ghosts. Maybe it was doing this, public speaking, valid fear. Um, so all understandable. Mine might be silly, but it was getting lost in the grocery store. And there was one particular time when I was like five or six years old. I remember like picking up this thing in the aisle. It might have been a troll doll. I don't know. Weird thing to have at a grocery store. Um, but then like looking up and my mom just completely disappeared, had no idea where she was, and immediate freak out mode that I had seen her for the last time possible as a goner. And I have to give my five-year-old five year self a little bit of a break, because there's some reasons. I was short. I'm not short now, but I was then. I couldn't like see over things. And also, like if you've ever been around a little kid, you know they fi fixate on the thing that's right in front of them. So I had this tunnel vision. Um, so I was only able to see those things like right immediately. What I needed was to be like, you know, Superman, have the power of flight, and actually get to this view of the room, to just see that my mom and my brother might have been right around the corner. That said, uh, I did have a friend growing up, his name was Marco, that when this happened to him, it was like horrifying, because his mom would be like, Marco, and it was just the worst thing to have adults see a polo back. So, infinite embarrassment with fear is always fun. So, uh, definitely a weird thing to put in your head, uh, to talk about Trello. You're here to talk about Trello, not about getting lost. But I promise it's going somewhere. Like, I don't know about y'all. Uh, these last couple of years have felt like this, where you know, work is spread out everywhere. Uh, our teammates are spread out over everywhere. And it can feel hugely disorienting to lack perspective and get that full picture of where our teammates are and what they're up to. And like we've talked about in a couple of sessions, the tooling that we're using has exploded. You know, COVID has pushed people that typically worked in offices into these uh, moments where they're relying on digital tools um, to, to really bridge the gap of those processes. And those tools have uh, just exploded in the number. A lot of those are specialized, and work can get lost. So we hear this a lot from customers. People feel like work is more siloed than ever. So none of that is as scary as maybe being a little kid lost in a grocery store, but it sure can feel disorienting to lack that perspective. And this is where Trello's been investing in the last couple of years as we've navigated how the world is changing around us. So the goal of today is to talk about how you can take some really simple things back to your team, to your own work, to help you from feeling lost at work. So level set on Trello. I know that not everyone in the room is as much of a Trello nerd as me. I've been a user since 2012, so I'm a decade in on this, and three and a half years in, I'm working on it. So. I acknowledge I probably have a little bit more of a, you know, encyclopedia of Trello. So let's do a quick level set. Um, Trello is this visual, tactile productivity tool. It launched in 2011, so just over 10 years ago. Became part of Atlassian in 2017, so just over five years ago. And uh, a lot of people know Trello for this very advanced Kanban board form factor. And it's a concept that we invented 10 years ago. And what's really cool is it still remains a very staple tool for millions of people getting things done across the globe. Uh, this idea of bringing a Kanban board into a browser is something that took us from zero people using it to over 90 million registered users. And the cool part is it's not just successful in numbers, people love it, it has the highest CSAT so score, so customer satisfaction score of any tool in the space. So I, I <laughs> bring all that up to not just like brag on Trello. Trello's a cool thing. But I want to say it more as like, I've had this awesome first 10 years of this product, but we know that the world is way different than it was when we launched. It's way different than it was 
two years ago. Even this last year has been insane. So I want to talk about where we're headed um, directionally in a vision for the next uh, bit of Trello. And I'm really excited about this vision also because of how it relates to Atlassian and how we're fitting into the broader Atlassian ecosystem of tools. So the two big parts, uh, or there are two big parts of the vision. The first one is that Trello is where every team member manages their personal work and projects with their closest teams. So let's unpack what that means. Um, so we kind of look at uh, teams and organizations in this sort of diagram where at the heart of every team is an individual and their close teams. So you can see you know, that's sort of the beginning of the story, then it fans out to department and organization. But Trello's sweet spot is enabling individuals with their close teams to manage their own productivity and collaborate with those close teams. So sometimes we refer to this as like your collaborative network at work. I'm a designer, so you can imagine me working, say, as a designer on an agile dev team. Those are the people I see every day, at least on Zoom. Um, and so let's talk about how this applies to me. So we haven't really like formally met yet, but my name's Stu. I'm a design manager on Trello. Um, being a manager means that I have a lot of these collaborative networks. I end up working with the R&D teams on Trello that are actually shipping functionality work with recruiting, because we're hiring like crazy. If you know any good designers, talk to me. I uh, work with our Atlassian design team, particularly our design system team, quite a bit as we adopt more and more of their componentry. Work with the Trello design team. I may manage some of them, but some of them are a little bit further away, work on other teams. I work with Trello leadership to understand how what we're shipping affects strategy. Work with HR, our Atlassian platform teams and always in pushing like special initiatives as well. So working on quite a few teams, right? And I'm sure we're all a little bit like this because organizations and departments are made up of many of these collaborative networks. So each of their needs is different, of course. So that HR team that I might work with certainly is going to have a different flow than the dev team that I work with or even other designers. So what's cool about Trello is it can actually be shaped to fit any of those different needs really quickly and nimbly. And uh, I think it's because it's like this thing. I think Trello is able to do this because it's like cauliflower. I don't know if it's just regional for me, because I live in Austin with you know, Whole Foods on every other block. Uh, but have you seen what cauliflower is doing these days? It's like really having a moment. Um, so it can be rice. It can be like nuggets. My kids still won't eat them, but they can be that thing, pizza. Um, but in a similar way, like we'll talk to Trello users, and from one customer conversation to the next, the way that some team is using, even for the exact same use case, the way that they're using Trello versus the other one is widely different and is shaped and tailored to their exact needs. But again, I had to point this out, it's freaking funny, as I was prepping for this talk, you know, on the cauliflower thing, I was like, did you even ask cauliflower if it wants to be all these things? So I love that tweet. Um, so the next big part of our vision for Trello is that it's a place to visualize and engage with work happening in any tool. OK, we saw this big spaghetti mess of tools earlier. What this actually ends up looking like, hopefully not just for me, is this massive <laughs> list of browser tabs that is insanely, uh, insanely psychotic, is the only way to put it. Um, and a lot of these tools sometimes are like for you know, specific uses. Uh, a lot of people are using different tools based off of preference, but it's just made things explode. And we've seen these numbers a little bit here in the last, uh, last day or so, that if you're working in a huge company, this is a huge problem. There can be a, over 180 different apps deployed across uh, our companies. But what that ends up like yielding out as is um, a lot of time spent just looking for information so you can spend almost 40% of your day just looking for information across this huge tool chain. And almost half of the time, workers are saying, I can't even find the thing I'm looking for. So a lot of that become, comes based off of those highly specialized tools where examples being like a Salesforce uh, instance used by a sales team or Jira used by a dev team. Um, so it can make it where it's really difficult to get in and find the thing you're looking for. So what part of our vision is that we're taking Trello from this huge spaghetti mess of tools to solving that by being able to bring in the select bits of those uh, 
uh, pieces of information from those tools into Trello and curating it for your own individual and your own team use. But not in a way that's just seeing the thing but taking action. So we'll talk about that. Um, and I want to get into re reality. I talked about like some background of Trello and some like vision-y stuff. But the reality um, is probably the mo more important thing for today. So what are we building towards a vision? Again, acknowledging not everyone is a Trello nerd like me. Quick primer, uh, we'll keep it in that kind of ingredient theme. There's th three key ingredients for Trello. Um, not, I'm not clever enough to like see if there's three different types of cauliflower, but just stick with me on the metaphor. Um, so the first one is this board form factor. If you sort of had to squint and say, what is Trello? You might even draw this out. Um, so it's what most people know about Trello, that's Kanban boards. So it's the, <coughs> the uh, main container for work. Then we have lists within that that can be named and arranged in any way. And then within those lists are cards. And what's cool about the cards is they're sort of our smallest but mightiest unit in Trello. Every card can be opened. It has a card back where you can go in and infinitely tweak what's on the back of the card. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. So I said, most people, when they think about Trello, think about Kanban boards. But I'm here to tell you, Kanban boards are not what make Trello special. We have that in Jira software. We have it in Jira work management. Competitors have Kanban boards. So if that's not what makes Trello special, what is it? It's cards. So that small but mighty unit. And this metaphor came from the thing that all of us have done, whether it was when we were kids or when we didn't have computers at our disposal or before we were using a tool of our choice. It's these sticky notes that may have been stuck to your monitor up on the wall or maybe something that was jotted down in a planner which has made it really easy to grok this concept. But what's awesome is now that cards are digital instead of physical, they can be all sorts of things, like a unit of work, the task that you're actually looking to get done. It can be context. We have entire people that are writing project plans on card backs to give all the context to their team. It can be project milestones, so like literal dates. It can be asset repository. You see people storing project files in Trello cards or linking them up to like Dropbox. And because Trello is like cauliflower, again, it could be, cards can be anything that you want them to be. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at like three just quick demos of how cards are evolving. So the first one is around customization. We saw this card back earlier, which is vanilla when you look at it at first, but that's on purpose. It's meant to be added to and tweaked for specific use cases. You can do things that are simple, like just writing a quick description. But we offer tons of different ways, and I'm not going to be able to cover all of them, but just tons of different ways that we can actually customize the card back. So we've always had labels that were visual indicators or like status. Um, we've also recently shipped to all of our platforms across web, iOS, and Android a lot more control over what the front of the card looks like. And this one's really exciting. Custom fields are a way that you can actually uh, tweak the UI and append the UI of the card back to bring in custom data and custom data fields. What's really exciting about this is we just made this feature more broadly available in our standard plan, so you get more value for less with this one, which is really awesome. And at the same time that we did that, we also removed any lim limits that we had on integrating with third parties, so you can hook up your Trello cards and boards up to all this, the other products that you're using and love. And the last one here on sort of the card back itself is uh, automated action. So you can actually, through our automation platform, add custom board buttons that allow you to do really awesome things. And we're going to take a couple look, looks at that. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on is Atlassian Editor is coming to the card back, which is going to be really cool if you're using Jira or Confluence. It's going to be this really familiar editing experience. So I've been using this internally for a couple months now, and it's definitely one of the pieces of this that I can't live without. So get ready for cards to be a lot more powerful. Okay, so here's an example of how that customization plays out in a way that, say, a design team could be taking that really vanilla card and turning it into anything that they want it to be. So in this example, we've got a project goal, we've tagged our designer, the approver, put in some inspiration links out to Dribble or some other resources. We've added custom fields, so we've in indicated that it's a high priority project. It's going to take 12 design hours. 
and we're using the Figma power up like any good modern design team hanging out in Figma. But what's cool is it can bring the uh, latest, most up to date content from Figma right into the card back. So we're not going and scrambling to go find the design. It's right there. I can open it and interact with it. And like I mentioned, through automation, we can actually append the card back. So under this automation tab, we can actually add an approved button. So that's something that I've set up. And in this example, an approver might come in and say, this is ready to go. Let's go ahead and move this to the dev column that then sends that to the dev team. So the next big advancement that we've got is a whole new type of cards called Dash Cards. Uh, this was just recently shipped. And um, Dash Cards are a way for you to really keep track at a high level of how the team is progressing. So this is another example as a design team of um, basically tracking all of the work that is on each individual designer's plate. And so we could see it's a list per each designer. But at this view, it's a little bit hard to like, extract the insights. You can't really see like, outside of a list count, like, how, like who has what on their plate, what might be slipping, what might be overdue. So dash cards are awesome because they help provide automatic plug and play insights and the ability to deeply customize how those insights are presented. So we take that same board and we're able to like make sense of what's actually happening on it. So I've set up dash cards that in this example show that I've got 24 open issues across this board. I've got one due in this next week, but importantly I can see what's overdue this week. I can then set it up where at the top of each of these columns I can see who has what on their plate in a numerical uh, fashion so I can unblock people if I need to. And I can't really go into a huge demo on this, but if you go and play with dash cards, you can do so much with it with using different data across Trello, and uh, it's really powerful. What's really cool, too, is that all these cards behave the same way as other cards, so you can comment on the back, assign, uh, assign people to them. And we think this is going to be a really cool building block for just getting insights across your board. So really excited to see how people start using this. And the last big one is link cards. Talked about smart links a bit over the last couple of days, but these have some really cool uses inside of Trello. So this is a really basic example of me going to grab a really cool marketing video that our marketing team just put together for a campaign. So that's just adding as a URL to the title of the card, and I can open this and play it right in place, which is super awesome. But seeing is cool, doing is actually the thing that is really impressive here. So in this other example, I'm writing a blog about why I can't focus on work. I open it up, and I can actually make edits right here. So this is coming from Google Docs. I'm making edits on the fly without, again, having to go find that file in the whole mix of Google's you know, formless uh, file structure. And I could just leave it right there without having to know, um, you know what that is called or searching for it. And so we'll look at a couple other examples of this in a bit. So a lot of cool features, but what's important is how does that actually fight the sprawl that we've been talking about? So we had sort of like a problem at the beginning. We've got all these tools. People are lost at work. Like how do these little features, disparate features, actually start to fight this? So let's take a look at a company that might be using these in tandem. So we have this company called Bankly. They're a finance startup you know, fictional, uh, fictional finance startup that has started using Trello. And this company's uh, growing like a lot of our awesome companies are. And while they're growing, they want to hire the best talent, but they also want to hire the most diverse talent. They don't want just people coming in the door. And so to help with that is we have a hiring manager named Jill. So she's a technical recruiter. And her responsibilities, you know, <clears throat> are for sourcing the best candidates um, and moving them to the pipeline and like we were talking about, Trello really has a sweet spot for individuals. So Trello is the first place that Jill checks in every single day. And you can see her board is really organized in a list that has resources, her to-do list, different projects she's working on. And in this resource list, she's able to go ahead and start opening these. So like the first one on the list is she's actually opening the uh, Excel file, or sorry, the Sheets file from Google. So she can check out her team's hiring budget. And in this resource, she has a board card, which is another type of link card straight to another board in Trello. She can open this uh, Envision report on the state of design. 
that is saved in your Dropbox. Again, she might be reviewing this before some interviews. And then she probably, you know, if she's headed into a tough interview, can put her favorite hype track from Spotify in here. So sorry to rickroll everybody. Um, Yeah, so the other reason that Jill really loves Trello is because it has her most personal device in mind as well. So Trello has an awesome mobile app that if she steps away from all that work she's doing on her own personal board, she's able to access it right away. So like I said, Jill is a hiring manager, and as she's a hiring manager, or sorry, she's a recruiter, and in that role, she works with a lot of different hiring managers, and they have this weekly sync. And in that weekly sync, they can actually just by using smart links, add in uh, things like their job description that they're all aligning on, or maybe even bring in from that hiring knowledge base the design interview questions. And it's all right there where they know we're gonna use these things in every single meeting, so why hunt it down? Another thing that her team does is they use Miro for candidate reviews. And so in this same session, they will open Miro right in place, and again, like we saw in the Google Doc example, they're actually able to go and edit in place. So this is a thing that they're doing collaboratively in the same space and making edits on the fly without having to go track all this work down. Another thing that they do in this meeting is they review candidates together. So you can see there's links to Dribbble, we have a Figma portfolio, and together they're able to go in, again, without having to track things down, and actually find this person's portfolio, review it together, and navigate it, and then move this person through the pipeline. And you'll notice that they're using dash cards to get a high-level glance of who's in the active candidate column and then who's moving to on-site. So if you were to talk to Jill, she'd probably say something like, Trello's sweet spot is helping me get on top of my work and then working with my close teams. But we have this broader hiring process across all of Bankly where we need a little bit of a different structure. And so, when we start to involve all of these different teams, like our HR, legal, finance, diversity, equity, and inclusion teams, we actually lean on a tool called Jira Work Management that actually, actually allows us to have a shared set of ownership uh, across the entire pipeline so that candidates aren't stuck waiting on us. And so, once Jill gets into JWM, she can see each role a candidate's applying for, where they're at in the pipeline, who owns each step. And what's important to differentiate here is that unlike with Trello, when we're working with an individual or a very close team, we can very rapidly agree on a process. We're involving all of these different teams from across the organization. We have to re rely on some set workflows. It can't just be something that we throw together in the moment. And so JWM really helps provide that structure that defines the process, that every candidate goes through, it can be easily audited and tracked across the organization. So like I said, while the company's growing rapidly, if you were to also talk to Jill about what she actually cares about, she wants to get the best, most diverse people in the door. It's not just butts and seats. So one of the things that she's come up with is this idea to actually lean on the dev team to create tech that will help uh, remove bias during their hiring process. So Jill's gonna go over to Confluence and draft out her project plan, gets her idea on paper, and then also allows her to drop in uh, the place where she's actually scheduling this work in Trello. And so now, if you were to talk to Jill, she's like, I've got an idea of where, where we're headed, but I need to get this in a place where we're actually working with our engineering team. So you might also know too where Jill working in the people team doesn't necessarily work with the dev team all the time, so they need to find a common place to collaborate on this work. So yeah, like I said, Jill's working with the engineering team. She sets up this whole project board in Trello, bringing in that project overview that we just saw. And then what's really cool is she can set the key milestones. And so using Trello view, she can see those milestones across a timeline to see how long the project's gonna take. And then she can also see as a calendar to see what's coming up here in the next week. And then what's really cool is the dev team has asked Jill and her peers on the people team to help them track bugs as we're building out the software. So in this bug list, you can see that Jill's tracking a couple things that she's reported. 
but then she found a new bug with a Gmail sync issue. And using the JIRA power up, she's able to go ahead and create an issue right here from Trello without ever going anywhere else. It's in the place where she's most comfortable, sets that task, and you see that it automatically makes it a JIRA issue and then populates over into JIRA for the dev team to triage. So in this example, we're seeing how Jill is using Trello to work across multiple teams, multiple projects, lots of work streams. Really, she's using Trello to get control over the chaos. So we really believe that Trello is for teams like Jill's. So people that are looking to spend less time working on work use our visual organization tool to represent their world inside and outside of work. And we have that secret sauce of this just enough structure, so the boards, lists, and cards. And so we really believe that this results in people like Jill getting control over the work chaos. So since I'm all about productivity, I'm going to move my card over to the done column of delivering the talk. But I want to talk about just what we saw. We saw a vision for Trello, where we're headed. Talked about card customization, how that allows more people to have more control over the cards. Talked about dash cards, which give new insights across cards. Link cards that bring content in to view and interact with. And then we saw how teams could be using Trello for cross-product collaboration. So thanks for taking the time with me today, um, and hopefully learn a few things that you can take back to your team even as early as today. So thank you all. All right, thanks so much, Sue. I think with that, we have some time for Q&A, so I'll be coming around with a microphone. So if you want to raise your hand, uh, we got some time for questions for Stu. You want to kick us off? All right, I'm coming back. Anyone else can raise their hand as well. I can get you afterwards. All right, I'll be asking again soon, so. Those smart links look, look awesome. How many of those are available today? Like, how many integrations do we have live? I think it's like 40 that are full, fully robust, but there's over 150 that are in development, 150 different services. So that's a cool thing is we have a lot of our core products that you would use uh, on a daily basis, but then we're growing that catalog, and there's teams that are building out more functionality there. So. Is there something like a public API to create smart links, like for your own custom uh, apps that you have in your organization? Could you, uh, maybe Justin, could you repeat? I couldn't hear with the speakers pointing that way. So. Okay. Uh, is there something like a custom API, you know, um, to create smart links for Trello? So yeah, it's actually, that's a platform service, and it's, a, it's about building out, so say you had uh, an app, you could actually build a resolver so that that would then um, allow you to have control over how your content is represented in Trello, but then also into other Atlassian tools. So that's the really cool thing. Like, there's good examples of Miro has really like refined their SmartLink presentation, where they've like customized the UI. If you embed it into, say, like a Confluence page, it's actually stripped back of just the things that are necessary there. Um, so yeah, happy if you're looking for something specifically like that to hook you up with our platform team that can talk about the ways that it's done. But it, from my understanding, it's a pretty like light lift on the dev side to do it. Where does uh, Trello stand with the uh, data residency? I'm actually not super close to that, but uh, the person to ask, we have an awesome Trello booth uh, where our enterprise team would probably be the best people to connect with. So I'm not currently a Trello user, but um, I'm trying to understand what the sweet spot is for Trello versus Jira software versus work management versus all the other. Uh, what's the sweet spot for Trello? Yeah, I mean, I think like there's also a question to ask of like who's using the tools because if you were to say like, oh, what's the sweet spot for a software team? I kind of don't think that there's like a large reason for that team running an agile process to abandon using Jira and go to Trello. 
But that same, say, engineer on that team might actually use Trello for that sort of like messy work of like, okay, I'm gonna use this for my own individual task list. Like, I don't, you know, there's not many people that are using uh, Jira to like manage their everyday tasks of like, I gotta get this done, I gotta get this done. Um, so there might be a really nice fit there for that sort of like individual productivity that lives outside of the team. Um, but then also there's use cases where even that same team that might be using any of the like Jira software, Jira business, or sorry, Jira work management tools, uh, they might use it for different rituals. Like we see a ton of people using uh, Trello for, for retros, so being able to really get in quickly and collaboratively in a place that's a little bit like structured and messy and can be set up quickly. And so that's, that's how I see, sort of see them fitting together. It doesn't always have to be like an either or conversation. It could be more about what's the situation you're using uh, the tools for. So hopefully that helps, but. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right, well, I think uh, with that, we can wrap this session up. But Stu is available for questions uh, if you want to approach him for some one-on-one -on -one consultation or if you have any curiosities. But otherwise, thank you all for making it out today. You got one more round of breakouts if you just make it. And uh, yeah, another round of applause for Stu. Thanks, everybody.